Hello everyone, another episode in 10,000 series on the T7. And this time let's talk about the accessories I have on the bike. Uh, something which is not standard when you buy T7. And when I was putting uh, the list together, I was actually quite amazed because I thought I didn't change that much on the bike. I didn't add that many accessories. And it turns out that there is 19 different things on this bike which is not standard. Uh, one thing to mention, I'm not sponsored, so 99% of what you see here is uh, paid for uh, with my own money, which is good because I can tell anything about these things. Um, I got a discount from Yamaha dealer for the, the bark busters and the heated grips, and they saved my ass when I was waiting for the bash plate from Outback, which was not in production yet and I needed to leave. They actually gave me the bash plate. Uh, big shout out to them. And also my TPMS has been gift from my fellow traveler friend, Scotty. Uh, so let's go from the top to the bottom and I will talk about each accessory and they all work really well. Uh, so that's the baseline and I will talk more about what maybe does not work or what is a little bit of the issues with them. Okay, so things in the cockpit. Um, the double take mirrors, I had them on Honda before, uh, so I just migrated them here. Um, I've destroyed my normal uh, mirrors on Honda and then I bought these. They're really heavy duty. The problem with the ram mounts is that these bowls are rubber and they get completely worn and then it just wobbles. So that's one thing with the mirrors. There is a aluminium aftermarket ball. I will link it in the description. Otherwise, the mirrors are really cool. I really like them. Um, another point on the Yamaha, because this thread is left-handed, not right-handed, you have to have an adapter to be able to mount the ball for the uh, ram um, arm. I have here the rally rate um, bracket for the top, um, mostly just because I like the look of it. Um, what they have is the holes for the GPS mounts and all that, but I don't use the GPS. So for me, it is just a cool looking thing. Um, heated grips, Oxford ones, um, really good stuff. Used them on Honda for ages. I, um, my heated grips on Honda the Oxford ones did about 60,000 kilometers or more. And I mean, at some point they started to be really sticky and the, the, the wires were starting to go through, but they were still working, so I kept them. Bark busters, I'm still here with these hands only because of the bark busters. There's probably nothing to say which would be bad about the bark busters, except that these are um, two pieces. Uh, this is the extension and um, you can snap that extension very easily. Um, there was a question from people whether these aluminum bars um, actually bend, and I haven't been able to bend it, and I have been able to bend almost everything on, our, on every single bike. These are the main impact point for the bike, so uh, it always will hit about here. I do have a second auxiliary, 12 volt um, socket installed by Yamaha. And then I have a really cheapo Rock Bros um, adjustable uh, phone mount. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't have the um, 12 mil bracket or whatever that uh, bar diameter is. So I had to manufacture my own bracket to hold it in there. It is surprisingly solid for what it is. Ah, oh, we see here a TPMS. Um, now it's blinking red, which means that I have low pressure in the front and in the rear. Um, it is really, really cool thing. If you um, watch my Outex video to know more about the TPMS, I'm talking about it there. Being here, looking at the tank, um, there is a Google Tech fuel filter in it. Um, very, very good product. Again, I had it on a Honda throughout uh, Central Asia and all that, and it worked perfectly. But 
the huge issue with the, with the with the filter is that because the Japanese bikes has really narrow opening for the tank, if you put the filter in, it will make fueling pain in the ass. I have some videos how I was fueling in Europe where the um, the gas stations just give the foam and it is really, really, really tedious. Here in Africa, no problem. Or if I fuel up with the rotor packs, no issue at all. Okay, in here I want to show you that I have the Google Attack air filter and I have a separate video about it. It is a brilliant product. And then um, the lithium battery I have. This was a direct swap from Honda again. And this battery has a Bluetooth connection. So what I can show you here is that this is how it looks on the phone. Um, I have all four cells and it tells me whether it's charged or not, what the temperature of the battery is, overall charge and how many volts. Now you can also use this quite nicely as a um, test for your rectifier. And if I turn the engine on, this number is a voltage which should come from the rectifier and it should be 14 volts. And it is almost 14 volts and it's charging. So that's really cool thing about the um, lithium battery and especially about the uh, Bluetooth, I actually thought that I will never ever use this feature, but funnily enough, it is kind of cool to just check uh, whatever is um, happening with the battery. The only disadvantage of this battery is it shouldn't be jump started. Uh, I have a video about starting the motorcycle with the capacitor instead of the battery. Okie dokie, in the rear, of course, dual tube. I always have that. I had two on Honda. Here I have only one because of the rotor packs on the other side. The tool tubes are really cool. The only thing which is important to do is to make sure that as you stuff them with heavy stuff, these mounts will break eventually, and they do. So what I have here is a heavy duty zip tie, which is giving it the support and it's tied up to the frame. So that's one thing to do with it. On the other side, I have the rotor packs. This is one gallon rotor packs, uh, which one US gallon rotor packs, which is about 4.8 liters. You can, if you overfill it, you can do like five or four nine. And how it works, the mounting on the rack is that um, it it's really fiddly to actually put it in there. So you have to kind of take it like that way and then twist it a little bit and then it comes out. And the reason is that this edge is already, uh, there is already rubbed off. So it really fits only in one position with the combination of this rack and, and that. But really, really good, especially for the range the Tenere has. This proved to be quite an important piece of kit. So you see, just wrestle it in, put it that way, and that's it. This rotor pack has about 70,000 kilometers on it. Being in the back, let's talk about the luggage rack. I have the Outback MotorTag X frame with the variable X bracket. Um, and this is the symmetrical design. They are coming up with the asymmetrical design where the other side where I have the rotor packs is gonna be narrower. But I like the symmetrical design because I can mount the tool tube here above the exhaust and then I can have the rotor packs on the other side. You know, and yes, it's wide, but hey. This X frame is the one which has the variable um, X bracket which allows me to mount the Moscow motor plates on four uh, mounting points. I mean, three is probably enough anyway, but more importantly, I can mount the rotor packs on the other side. If I wouldn't be able to move this bracket all the way to the end, the rotor packs wouldn't fit. So that was really good. Um, the X frame is also good because it has these hoops or how to say that, and if I change from Moscow motor to something else, this is gonna be very, very handy. Outback has also non-X frame, just 
just a luggage rack which misses the X bracket and misses these uh, mounting points and I think that the X frame is just much more useful to be honest. Um, in terms of uh, how sturdy that is, it is super, super strong. I haven't been able to break it yet, and that's something. All the impact goes onto the Moscow plates on both sides. They, they are surprisingly sturdy as well. So yeah, that would be the luggage rack, quite like that. Let's talk about the crash bars. I do have the Aldwick Mototech crash bars. The lower part is mounted here, goes all the way and mounted over there. And this is the upper crash bar. The combined weight for both is about 5.6 kilos. By the way, the frame is about five. Um, and I like these, I try to use, <laughs> damage them almost every single day. Most of the impact is absorbed in here and some of the trickier stuff goes and absorbed over there. Uh, I like that they have two uh, crossbars. One crossbar goes under the radiator and another goes under the headlight um, and is actually mounted onto the frame up here as well. So <clears throat> there's a, a lot of energy which they can absorb and they provide a good platform for the auxiliary lights. Um, there's only two missing points and one is that the um, bolts are rusted already but Outback Mototech fixed that by changing a supplier so from March I believe 2020 is a new supplier so all the crash bars will come in with the stainless steel bolts and also that the, the toolbox for the bash plate um, is not compatible but I will fix that. At the time when I was buying there was not much choice now it's a different story. So for example, there are crash bars which goes from here all the way to the mounting point at the frame at the bottom, which protects the water pump and the engine casing, which is something which I really miss. So maybe I'm gonna adjust these as well. Uh, that would be really nice. My auxiliary lights are from ADV Monster. I had the Model 30 on Honda. Um, I haven't been able to break those lights for the whole journey. I broke the lens on those 30s and they were still working. So definitely pretty good. It's all aluminium lights. Um, this is a combi light, what they call, which is a floodlight together with a seven degree spot. It's about 3000 lumens. They are slightly more warmer than the headlight though. So the color is not exactly the same. Um, and they work really well. They're really bright. They are so bright that <clears throat> I have to use uh, the dimmer. So I have uh, bought the dimmer from ADV Monster as well, so I can run them from zero to 100%. And the really cool feature on a dimmer is that it has the high beam override. So when you switch on the high beams, these go on 100% power. Now, that worked perfectly on Honda and that high beam override doesn't work on Yamaha. And the reason is that this headlight has some weird electronics for switching high beams and low beams. And it basically gives the power on low beam 12 volts. And when you switch on the high beams, the voltage goes to 0 0.88 volts. And the um, switching in the dimmer from ADV Monster is not compatible with that. So that's a real shame because Except that, they're really good. They're also reasonably priced. Um, after last experience, I bought the lens protectors for them. Very good light. To speak about the bash plate, I returned to the crime scene of my latest crash. The first one flew over there quite fast, tried to jump, lost uh, control on landing and wedged the bike between this big boy and a little stone. Hit the big boy here with the front fork. And then the most of the impact has been absorbed by the bash plate. There's a big dent here and, and there. Yeah, I mean, as any other bash plate, which is made out of four millimeter of aluminum, it worked well, absorbed the energy. No problems there. Um, it's the Yamaha OEM bash plate, the heavy duty version of it. Uh, what I like is that it has a toolbox option. Unfortunately, I cannot mount the toolbox because the crash bars from Outback Mototag have this lower mounting point one centimeter too low. So when I'm back, I'll cut this and, and reposition it. Um, another thing to mention is what I would like is some protection for the water pump on this side. 
Uh, there are some bash plates which actually have a protection, uh, so that would be good. Uh, on the other side, this bash plate does have protection for the casing. So there's a little lip which protects the engine casing and that's quite good. Uh, that's really nice. Um, another thing to mention is the protection for the suspension linkage. Uh, this bash plate has its only small lip, which would probably deflect like uh, rocks flying into it or something like that. But if you skid over the rocks or something, that wouldn't protect the suspension linkage. You would hit the, the rocks with the suspension linkage. Uh, so in that case, uh, some other alternative is probably a better choice. But so far, I mean, it's a bash plate. Uh, no rocket science does the job it's supposed to do. Um, when I mount the toolbox, it's going to be pretty sweet setup. And that's it. That's the accessories I have. We run through the list. Um, Remaining are the rally raid front uh, fork guards uh, screws. Uh, I talked about them uh, last video. The Outex out kit, of course, the tubeless conversion. Another video on that, check that out. And one thing which is missing at the moment, and that is the stronger spring on the suspension. So that uh, will come later on. So that would be 19 things. It's impressive that I have put 19 things on the bike so far. And uh, a little bit about each of them. Uh, so far, pretty good stuff. Um, if you have any questions about anything, just ask and I'll be happy to um, answer any questions relating to what I have. And yeah, see you next time with another episode.